Hello everyone, welcome back to the session on deriving the normalized difference vegetation index from multispectral satellite imagery. In our previous example, we looked at gen uh, calculating NDVI from Sentinel-2 imagery. And this is where we got to over the, up in the north of Australia, uh, Kakadu National Park, South Alligator River region. And what we're going to do now is have a look at bringing in a scene from Landsat 8. So we do that by going File, Import, Optical Sensors, Landsat. You see the huge range of products we can actually use within the Sentinel application. Um, now let's choose Landsat 8. There's two options for Landsat 8. You'll see there's a 15 meter and a 30 meter option. Most of the bands we'll be using in Landsat 8 are at 30 meter spatial resolution. There is a panchromatic band at 15 meters. But let's bring in the 30 meter data. Um, we need to navigate. I've downloaded these data sets from the USGS website and using the, the Earth Explorer interface. And I'm going to pick, these are both very similar in, in date. I'm going to pick this one very close in day two to our Sentinel data. So our Sentinel scenes we've been looking at are from 25th of, of August, 2017. And the file we're bringing in now from Landsat is just um, four days later, 29th of August. 2017. You can see our progress down here. Um, and again, just opening up the zipped file that contains all the information we need. It'll take a little while to import. While that's happening, let's close our previous NDVI image and let's just reopen a true color composite of the Sentinel data. That loads up nice and quickly. And we can zoom in the pixel detail. So we can move that around. Let's focus on an area, say over here. Okay, now we see that in the product explorer, our third product is our Landsat scene that's ready. Uh, just to remind you, if we click on these drop down arrows, look at the bands, we can see the bands in Sentinel 2, including the NDVI that we calculated. If we do the same for the Landsat image, you can see there's slightly fewer bands, but that spans a much broader range of wavelengths going right up into the thermal infrared. But importantly, since we're interested in NDVI, it contains the red and the near infrared bands. Important to note the positions though. Um, in Sentinel 2, the red band is band 4, whereas, and that's the same in Landsat, slightly different wavelength um, 665 versus 655. In Sentinel-2, band 8 is the near-infrared at 842 nanometers. And that's band 5 in Landsat 8 at 865 nanometers. It's very similar wavelengths. Now, to calculate, well, let's first open up that true color composite for Landsat 8. Red in the red channel, green in the green, blue in the blue. Perfect. That opens up. Um, Landsat is slightly coarser spatial resolution, does cover a larger extent. We have a bit of overlap with the Sentinel image. Let's actually split these windows, tile them vertically, and as we zoom in, we can observe the same area remember to have these two icons highlighted and we see that they do look very similar a bit of a difference in the the tone or the hue in the sentinel 2 image um, slightly different processing let's have a look though at how to 
calculate NDVI from Landsat. We have already done it for Sentinel-2. And remember, there's two ways of doing it, either by band maths using the equation. Easier way is just using the optical menu, optical, thematic land processing, vegetation, radiometric indices, NDVI processor. Now, be sure to choose the Landsat image. And this is the target that will be created. It just adds NDVI on the end. Um, I'm going to save it to my directory. It'll open up in Snap when it's finished. Now, processing parameters. When we process Sentinel-2 data, because this toolbox is made by the European Space Agency, Sentinel-2 processing is very well integrated. That means we don't have to specify the red new infrared source bands. It automatically knows which ones to use. But if we try to run this now, um, we will get an error popping up because it doesn't know which bands to use. So we should specify to use the red band for red and the near infrared for near infrared. We can run that. Um, take a little while to run as it computes the equation, which is near infrared minus red divided by near infrared plus red. And we say OK and close. And let's close these images now. And in our product explorer, let's minimize some of these. We'll see we now have a fourth data layer added, and that is NDVI. And this is NDVI from Landsat 8. Remember that we can use the color manipulation tab to give this a more um, interesting color ramp, something that makes sense. Um, since we're looking at an index of plant vigor, let's choose something that goes on a scale with green at the upper end. So I would say let's take take this one that's pretty good um, now we can zoom in and have a look at how NDVI varies across that landscape dark green areas indicating points with a very high NDVI and if we use the pixel info and look under bands, NDVI, we can see these values. The dark greens have the higher values. Yellows, negative. And lighter greens, slightly lower values. So that's how we can derive NDVI from Landsat. Um, we did the same process earlier with a sentinel image and if I bring that back but a slightly different color stretch here but if we flick between these two they are pretty similar let's try the vertical tiling again and if we look it's not quite in the same same regions the mouth, that would be that point. Can zoom in a little bit closer. Do the same here. And some things you'll note looking at these images. For, for some reason, the synchronization between displays is not currently working, but we'll get those to roughly the same area. What you can see is just that there is so much more detail, uh, spatial detail in the sentinel images 
that's the top one but bear in mind that that's at 10 meter resolution and that the Landsat is at 30 meter resolution. Um, don't forget though that although Sentinel-2 has spatial resolution advantages and temporal resolution advantages over Landsat 8, that if we just quickly recap these bands in Sentinel-2, we, we span from 443 up to 2,190 nanometers, opening up that Landsat 8 band distribution again, 440 right through to 12,000. So Landsat 8 does incorporate the thermal infrared. So there's always pros and cons to using different sensors for, for many applications in land use, land change monitoring though, Sentinel-2 will become increasingly popular. It's high resolution, frequent revisit times, and a very useful range of wavelengths. So that's all for today on NDVI. I hope you found that useful. Um, look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, my name is Sean Levick, and this is brought to you by the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab. Thanks very much.